Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Space News Pod, a show about SpaceX, NASA, and spaceflight. I'm your host, Will Walden. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about SpaceX's Starship and the Lunar Starship and the SLS program. So let's get into it a little bit. And I want to show you this tweet from Marcia Smith, Space Policy Online, on Twitter, at SPCPLCY Online on Twitter. So let's just, this is from the other day, they had a, a conference to talk about where SLS and where Starship will be landing on the moon. And here's just a good rundown. So I found this tweet of the new technology that they're gonna be using and also what's gonna be happening with uh, the mission here. So they say NASA and SpaceX have worked together with agency scientists and technologists to identify the areas of the landing of the lunar Starship. Shortly after Artemis 2, SpaceX will perform an uncrewed HLS test. That's really cool. So we're expecting this anyway. We're expecting a SpaceX Starship uncrewed test for the HLS system, the human landing system test. So that means they're going to send a Starship to the moon and land it on the moon. Then Artemis 3, first time a woman will walk on the moon, first time humans visit the lunar South Pole. So they have to be ready by the time Artemis 3 is ready for a human rated starship. This is in a few years, by the way, a human rated starship to land on the moon and to also, you know, get people down there safely. And also they have to have all of the, uh, all the systems in place within the next few years to get this human rated. So it's going to be a tough job for SpaceX, but I think they can do it. Um, so here we go again. SpaceX providing Lunar Lander and NASA just selected two companies, Axiom and Collins, to develop spacesuits for ISS and the moon. And people have asked about um, why SpaceX hasn't built uh, lunar suits, right? They just, I mean, they could, they can. They built the uh, interior suits for uh, SpaceX's Crew Dragon. So they do have the technology to do this, but do they have the time or should they focus all of that time and all that energy on Starship production, on human rating Starship, on Falcon 9, and on Crew Dragon? That's what they're thinking about. And SpaceX is, or NASA has awarded this to other companies. So SpaceX is just like, hey, they can make those things. We're going to make these cool rockets that are going to send these people to the moon. So this is another interesting right here. SpaceX will launch fuel depot to earth orbit and tankers to fill it up. Starship HLS will get the fuel it needs to travel to lunar orbit. Once they're in ready, we'll launch Artemis three with crew and dock with Starship. So Artemis three with the crew will dock with the Starship. So that's a little bit different than the lunar gateway. Hey, real quick, while you're here, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. And there's a reason for this. Okay, YouTube uses that information to send you more Starship content in the future. Not only my content, but other creators out there that you may be interested in. So make sure to do that. It takes a second, it's free, and you'll get some really cool creators that have some really interesting things to say about Starship. So thanks. Um, two crew will land on the moon for 6.5 days. How cool is that? The people are going back to the moon, by the way, and do work inside and outside HLS. Then Starship will lift off to lunar orbit. Crew transfers to Orion, comes back to Earth, splashing down to uh, San Diego. So this is a whole different thing, right? So the lunar orbiter, we had a lunar space station that NASA was going to send up, uh, like a lunar outpost. They were going to set up a lunar orbiter, and that was where the Orion capsule was going to mate with that thing. And then SpaceX's Starship was going to mate with another part of it. And then the crew from the Orion was going to go into the space station, walk around, well, float around, I guess, because there's no gravity, float around, and then get into the HLS after they do all their preparation work to get down to the surface of the moon. So here it's a little bit different. Orion goes to the Starship and docks with the Starship. So there's no lunar outpost anymore for this. So I'm thinking, why do they need HLS? Why do they need Starship? Why do they need SLS and Artemis if Starship can actually get to the moon and then take people down to the lunar surface? Is this a redundancy thing? Are there too many systems in place? 
let me know in the comments. Is SLS kind of a, they, they don't need it anymore? Because Starship can do everything? Because if it's a human rated capsule, like or if it's a human rated ship, people should be able to launch on it, should be able to go to the surface of the moon after they tank up in Earth's orbit on a Starship. So is NASA throwing in the towel for the lunar outpost? Is that a thing? I don't think they're going to throw in the towel. What I think is going to happen, this is an important thing to, to, to kind of distinguish here, is that they're going to make a lunar outpost eventually. And this lunar outpost is going to house people from different nations, from different places all over the world. So this is where kind of people will get together, sort of like the International Space Station is now. But instead of the International Space Station being where it is, that's going to become privatized. The International Space Station will become privatized. People will be making tons of money from it. But the lunar outpost, that's going to be a thing that NASA and their partners from all over the world work together with. And currently, there is no real plan to use that in this Artemis 3 launch. Orion docks with Starship, and then Starship goes down to the moon. But yeah, let me know about that redundancy thing, because I don't know if they need Orion anymore. And the Artemis missions, the SLS missions, cost billions of dollars to launch. SLS doesn't cost billions of dollars to launch each time, costs millions of dollars to launch, which is a huge savings for NASA, for the U.S. government, for, yeah, everybody involved. So that's the thing. Is it worth it to keep SLS going if they could just dock with a lunar starship, you know, in Earth orbit and then go to the moon? It's a weird thing, right? And I love SLS. I'm going to tell you that right now. I love it. I think it's great. I think we need more heavy lift rockets. I think we need all the heavy lift rockets, Blue Origin, SLS, etc. We need Starship. Everybody needs Starship. But if you can get a crew of four or five people to the lunar surface with just a Starship, there's no need for the SLS program after this. So, you know, if Congress looks at this and says, hey, why is this costing us billions of dollars? These taxpayers don't need to be spending billions of dollars when we know that we have a system in place. I don't know. I, I'm going off on a little rant here, but I, I think that's the important part of these tweets. The other parts, the science parts are really cool. So uh, Bleacher says lots of factors went into choosing the candidate landing site. Can't go to one spot regardless of when we launch. Need options. Each of the 13 regions have several landing sites. And then there's a press release from NASA. And you can see all the things, all the, all the landing sites here. There's a bunch of them, depending on where they want to land that day. A uh, long way for, from Apollo landing sites, completely different, including extreme lighting conditions and thus temperature extremes, some of the coldest places in the solar system, right? So maybe going back to that spacesuit thing, extreme temperatures. And you're wondering, why would they put these people in the most extreme temperatures, the coldest places in the solar system? But it's very exciting from a science perspective, as they say. Uh, we'll have workshop early next year to engage the science community. And then they're going to start conversations about the lunar exploration assessment group meeting. And it goes on uh, a bunch of tweets here, but I would, I would suggest I'm going to link this in the uh, description below, but I think this is an important tweet because uh, not only the tweet, but the, uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing uh, for Starship, like do they really need the SLS at this time? I don't know. It, in my opinion, if Starship can work, if they can get this thing to work, and Elon actually had a tweet about this. I'm going to show you this tweet too. He has two things that he wants to do, but if Starship can work and they get it human rated, I don't think there's a need for the SLS for these kind of missions, but I want to show you this tweet from Elon. Two main goals this year, Starship to orbit. That's the important one. FSD wide release. The full self-driving for Tesla cars. Many of other things, of course, but those are the two giant kahunas will require insane work by many super talented people. But if anyone can do it, they can. It is an honor to work with such amazing human beings. So we had last year around September-ish, we were expecting September, October of last year, 2021, we were expecting a launch of the first uh, full stack Starship. But that never happened. There was a whole FAA thing. 
Um, was Starship ready for that? We don't really know. Uh, it doesn't seem like yes or no if it was ready. We didn't really get the uh, the okay from Elon or anybody at SpaceX that you know the version one of the Raptors was actually ready to launch. Uh, but we have had a few different uh, inclinations that it was ready to go, but we don't have a hundred percent guarantee that that's the case. So um, it's like been a year. You know, can they do it by the end of this year? Elon says they want to. He wants to push people really hard. Maybe they're going to have another surge of talent come down to the Starship facility in Boca Chica. So hopefully they get this done, which would be really crazy. And there's a whole other thing that I want to talk about, but that's for a whole other video. And that's for the launch of the Starship at this point. So I want to say thanks to everybody out there right now for listening. And I want to know your opinion on the SLS. Do you think it's necessary, especially with the Artemis one launching in a few days now? So I want to know what you think. What do you think of all this stuff going on? Let me know what you think. Okay. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.